there, gang, and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behaviour, the Earth's Mightiest Video Podcast. There's a whole lot of news out there to talk about, so let's talk about it. Coming in first with some big Hasbro reveals, we had another little check-in with the HasLab team. They showed us Giant Man as he's progressing. Nothing too much to write home about there, it's all stuff that we know. However, we also got the reveal of this brand new two-pack with a much smaller Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne the Wasp. We'd had the Wasp previewed already with a couple of renders, but now we can see the whole kit and caboodle in this two-pack, and dang it, Hasbro, you're killing it with the multi-packs, man. Hit and miss. Some of them not so relevant. You know, you're paying a bit of a Wolverine tax sometimes. And other times, like with the Shield 3-pack, like with this 2-pack, you're giving the people exactly what we want. I got no problem with this whatsoever. This is how we do it. Is the smaller Henry Pym somewhat surplus to requirements if you get in the HasLab? Yeah, but still, if you get in the HasLab, you're probably someone who doesn't mind having an extra couple of Marvel Legends around the house. But they said in their reveal how this is all part of them listening to feedback and being straight up, not putting characters behind tiers or unlockables or big paywalls. Because when you look at this two-pack, you think, oh, well, those could have easily have been tiers for Giant Man. But then again, if they were, the base price probably would have been a whole lot more. And also, we would have been complaining, understandably, that much wanted characters a lot behind the paywall. So doing this as a separate two-pack, no problem with that whatsoever. Especially when the two-pack is 50 bucks. So the normal price of two individual figures. But that is not considering that we're getting some extra bonuses on top of that, like what looks like a lovely soft goods lab coat for Henry Pym. We're getting different heads for both characters, a whole bunch of hands. It's a great, complete looking set. Dang it! Hasbro Marvel Legends team. It's, it, it's the salty videos that get more clicks, but honestly, it's hard to be mad about this one. Available for pre-order on Hasbro Pulse right now. I highly recommend you consider getting it. Sentinel Fighting Armor have revealed their newest addition to the line, which is going to be the Falcon Captain America Sam Wilson. And yeah, this looks like great use of their Sentinel Fighting Armor kind of style. Some figures and designs kind of fit that look a little better than others. And this one just, it pretty much just looks like Sam Wilson cap, just in a slightly more high-tech armor. But honestly, like, it looks bomb, man. I love these figures. Although I gotta say, I saw, I, I've never seen one in hand before. And I saw a loose Wolverine that was being sold in a second-hand store. And I was kind of like, huh. They're not, they're not quite as impressive when you, when you got them in hand. But then again, that's always the case. These figures are photographed to look particularly awesome. So I think they do lose a little bit once you've got, got them in hand. And you're like, mm, it's, it's not without its charm, but kind of lacking in some of the luster. But I don't want to dump on them. Because also, I've seen them in display stands all lit up in a nice dynamic pose in a flight stand. And dang, they do look pretty. So this guy, much like the other Sentinel figures, is going to be about $88 retailing from the Sentinel website directly and should be shipping around about July. Before we continue, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Into the AM who are sponsoring this video and providing me with some beautiful graphic design t-shirts. Guys, if you like this design, guess what? There are a whole bunch of other ones as well and you can see them all by clicking the link in the description below. And by doing so, you're gonna get 10% off your order as well if you wanna pick one up. The only problem you might have is deciding which design you wanna go for, because each one is better than the last. Luckily, the prices are so reasonable, and you get my 10% off as well, that you can buy a whole bunch of them and still be quids in. And not only do they look good, but they feel so darn comfortable. The cut is terrific, it accentuates all the positives. And also this particular one is 100% cotton, which considering that Dave has kind of sensitive skin, makes all the difference. I wear these things all day, every day, and dang it, they're so darn comfortable. So guys, if you wanna know about the comfort that I'm telling you about, you can experience it yourself by buying some t-shirts from Into The AM. So gang, thank you so much for watching. Into The AM, thank you so much for supporting this channel. And now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. It looks like Hasbro have let slip a little image of the upcoming Tiger Force, Tiger thing with wreckage. Target exclusive Tiger Force, Tiger Paw with Tiger Force wreckage. 
It's a whole lot of tigers going on there. But what we can tell from this image, it's another pretty looking G.I. Joe figure. I'm not familiar with this character, but it looks like he's got like a cool kind of battle damage sort of face, badass looking mask going on there. I dig that, man. A again, just the vehicles. Good time to be a vehicle collector. I won't wax local on this for too long because I'm sure we're going to get proper reveal pictures and a full announcement and all that jazz pretty soon. In the meantime, though, it's cool to see that the Tiger Force subline still going very strong. And honestly, I love the brighter, more, more wacky kind of characters. So this, this looks super fun. McFarlane Toys have shown off a sneak peek reveal of their Christopher Reeve Superman and yeah, judging by this picture, I actually think this looks like a really good rendition of the, the actor. It's hard to say, of course, just one still little image, but it looks, it looks nice. And you guys know that I'm not a big fan of the aesthetics of McFarlane. And sometimes faces, especially human faces of people we know, that can get a little uncanny valley. It's very difficult to crack. But honestly, this looks like kind of a, kind of a soulful, good looking Christopher Reeve. So honestly, this is one, this is one I'll keep an eye on. I love that they are going back to the old Warner Brothers films, all the different Batman licenses. I mean, could you think maybe we could get like a, a General Zod or a Gene Hackman Lex Luthor? That would be crazy, but also kind of fun. Time's gonna tell. McFarlane are getting back into the Kickstarter game. They've had one successful Kickstarter with their classic Spawn, which I didn't jump onto, and I kind of wish I did, because it does look really cool. Now they're doing a statue Kickstarter where they are recreating the front cover to the first Batman and Spawn crossover. This is a very, very cool, iconic image, in incredibly sort of 90s, and it's got a little bit of the Frank Miller Dark Knight kind of look to it, but then with that Image Comics early 90s cool brooding sort of aesthetic, there's a lot to like here. I look at this and I'm thinking, oof, that is... That is a lot of nostalgia in one little image. How much is it going to be? I don't know yet, because I've gone on to the McFarlane store, the McFarlane.com, and I can't see hiding or hair of it, but apparently it's launching today, which is the 11th. But again, I'm recording this in the morning of the 11th in Japan, which means in America it's still the 10th. That's why I can't find every, any, anything. <laughs> well done, brain. You put it all together there. So more information is going to be released soon, but in the meantime, it Looks like a fun little interesting Kickstarter project. You know, while everyone's banging on about the Mezco Ninja Turtles, and rightly so, let's not forget about the Samurai Force not Ninja Turtles. Currently up for pre-order on 5K Toys, they have revealed their new character, who is in no way connected to any other franchises. They've got a summer brand naming here, and it's an anthropomorphic turtle who looks like kind of a cool dude with an orange bandana and a whole bunch of accessories to join his other two brothers, one decked out in blue and one decked out in purple. Join the dots! If you're a conspiracy theorist, me, I don't know personally. There's also a rat character who's kind of a mentor. I think some things are just coincidences. So this guy, he does look great though, and kind of makes me want to go back and, 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 and buy the blue one and the, and the purple one too, because I didn't get the Mezcos. And honestly, I think I'm okay with that. But then looking at these, and I love the more unique, kind of unusual sort of design, because they can take what might be an accepted idea of what a character looks like, and then just recreate it and tweak it and change it and add little bits and details. It looks super pretty, man. It looks super pretty. The only problem is if I got this, then it would actually be a very expensive thing, because then I would have to go back and get the other ones as well. And then the ones that are probably going to come out in the future, because I can't help but think that maybe there's going to be, I don't know, like a big guy with blades coming out, or, or a rhino, or a, a warthog. There's, there's so many possibilities. And all of them with this design aesthetic and style, I'd be very interested to see them. But this one, he looks particularly cool. 3-0 are doing Hot Rod Shark Power Armor Fallout Warrior Brotherhood of Steel character. There you go, that's a whole lot of words. <laughs> they kind of make sense. Doesn't matter, just look at the pretty pictures. Oh my goodness, isn't it pretty? Brotherhood of Steel have some, some of the coolest mech armor in video games, I think. Like, part Medieval Knight and part sort of Warhammer 40k Terminator. Gotta love it. You're gonna have to love this one if you want to buy it, because it's about 450 bucks. But being 1-6 scale and seeing the amount of detail that goes into all the individual little parts and pieces, especially with this cool kind of paint job redesign thing that they've got going on here, it looks pretty wicked. It looks pretty badass. And speaking of Fallout, so far the early reviews for the TV show are really, 
really encouraging. We can only go on the critics, Rotten Tomato, blah, blah, blah type things. It's just the early buzz. But very often, early buzz on these projects tends to be pretty accurate. I remember a few weeks ago, there was early buzz that the X-Men 97 cartoon was pretty good. I, I think that lived up to the hype. So fingers crossed for the upcoming Fallout TV show and for this figure as well, because it looks like it's a good time to be a Fallout fan. The second wave of Legends of Dragonor figures is now available for pre-order, and honestly, I love the look of these guys. It's one of those issues where there's just so many great different like fantasy lines out there. I might say I love something. It doesn't mean I'm going to pick it up because there's just so much to choose from. This has more of that classic retros kind of aesthetic, which I really dig in that kind of Masters of the Universe kind of vein. I like that. Big nostalgia points there. But then with the modern articulation as well, they do look super pretty. As I said, it's just one extra line that I can't devote that much of my mind palace to because my mind palace is kind of feeling like a bit of a, a, a squatter's den at the moment. I got a lot going on. So I can only focus on a couple of things every now and then. But then when I do catch a little glimpse of a figure or a set like this, I think, dang it, there's just a whole lot of talented people out there and not enough money to spend on all of them. But if you like your Master of the Universe classic retro type figures, you might be one of those people who can pony up the dough. And you know what? You'd be right to do it. Speaking of Masters of the Universe, the Walmart exclusive Necoconda, Necroconda, I think that's the name. Let's see if the pictures match what I'm saying. Got a whole new bunch of pictures for him. He's going to be released, as I said, as a Walmart exclusive very soon. And I just love the aesthetic. I love, I love the artwork. Just completely recapturing that very dark, gothic, fantasy kind of look of the 80s Masters of the Universe figures. But again, just like with the previous line I was talking about, Dragonor, there you go. Go show my memory hasn't forgot what I was speaking about 30 seconds ago. The overall aesthetic is retro, but the tooling is modern. I really dig that. And also, this guy has a glow-in-the-dark gimmick, so he's got some extra points on me for that one. Creative Beast Studio... <laughs> Creative... <clears throat> Come on. Creative Beast Studios. Whew, that was another little <laughs> tongue twister. Creative Beast Studios <laughs> have shown pictures of their Allosaurus Dragon Slayer figure. And you can see that this line is a beautiful kind of homage to Dino Riders. They already had their Beast of the Mesozoic era line, which was just beautifully created dinosaurs. And some bright spark went, hey, what if we put cybernetic armor on them? Bet someone was like, that's not a bad idea, that. And guess what? Judging by these pictures, it's really not a bad idea. So yeah, these look super cool. Going to be, like again, smaller than your 1 12th kind of scale. I think more sort of 1 18th kind of scale. But that will allow you more space to have more Cybozoic dinosaurs on your shelf. So really, I think that's a pretty good decision. Boss Fight Studios are doing a 1 18th scale unicorn. And to be fair... This is the first time I think I've ever seen a, an articulated action figure of just a straight up rainbow unicorn. Honestly, I kind of love it. It's 1 18th scale, so that's smaller than your Marvel Legends 1 12th scale sort of size. So, I mean, you could always have it in a 1 12th collection. It'd be like a little baby unicorn. How cute is that? A little baby rainbow unicorn? Available directly on Boss Fight Studios' website, retailing for about 50 bucks. Actually, it might be slightly cheaper than that, because it's about 5,000 yen. That's what it comes up as here. So I think with the US dollar, yeah, it's going to be slightly cheaper than 50 bucks. Nonetheless, though, if you've des desperately been seeking. Put my teeth back in, that's easy for me to say. If you've been desperately seeking a rainbow unicorn, well dang it, you just found one. This is an interesting little update. I know 5k toys have had this Cthulhu on potential pre-order for the longest time. We've been seeing little reveal pictures and sneaky peeks for Gosh, probably over a year now. Well, the company that's behind this guy has finally put out another video showcasing what is coming, how it's coming together. And honestly, I mean, it does look pretty amazing. Big, definitely, but not like insanely huge. Two different heads. I don't like the weird little pokey thing. Looks a little bit Starship Troopers. But the Cthulhu head with all the tentacles and then with the wings and the weirdly proportioned body. It, it does look like a cosmic horror beyond what the mind can compare. 
I wonder if the price is going to be that as well. I don't know. I'm guessing about 120 bucks, give or take. But it's just fun to take a look at how this action figure is developing. I think it should be available for proper ordering, pre-ordering, full price, details, all that kind of stuff. It's got to be pretty soon. And at the, in the meantime, this has whet my appetite. Stumbled on the last sentence. Not going to redo it. One take Jake over here. Premium collectibles have been showing off their new juggernaut statue. One tenth scale, so a big boy. <laughs> a pretty big boy. This dude's aesthetic is just straight out of Marvel vs. Capcom, and so of course I love to see that. Juggernaut is just such a fun, cartoony kind of character already, just this big brick of a creature. So seeing him recreated like this, I can just see him, you know, with, you know, fighting the big sentinel, and ah, oh, it makes me want to go play Marvel vs. Capcom again, or at least make a video about it. That might have to be on the agenda pretty soon. But in the meantime, you can look at these pretty pictures, because dang it, Juggernauts never look cooler. Speaking as I was on the last episode about Storm Collectibles not continuing the Mortal Kombat line, Jada Toys are just teasing us with a good time by posting a little Mortal Kombat picture and kind of throwing out to the public the idea that maybe they could pick up the license. This is in no way a confirmation of anything. You know, I'd be surprised if there are even talks or anything happening, but it's nice of Jada to kind of test the waters and see what people are gonna say. Because honestly, after getting the first two waves of Street Fighter figures, I would say a big confident yes. Yes, Jada. I would like to see what you would do with that license, especially since you're kind of establishing yourself as the company that completes the lineups, that bodes well for a Mortal Kombat set. So uh, yeah, certainly Jada Toys, you got my vote. The Hasbro Marvel Legends team are going to be doing another Pulse video on the 15th of this month, only a couple of days away, and you know that means more Marvel Legends reveals. And dang it, I'm already getting a little bit excited. Are they going to be hinting at any Wolverine Deadpool stuff? I don't know. I still feel like it might be too early without a full story trailer that's out. I don't know, because they're very cagey about not wanting to give things away, but nonetheless, it's just it's almost like Christmas coming early when they do these live streams because we can get excited about what's going to be under the virtual Christmas tree on YouTube. I'm driving that Christmas analogy too much and it's not making sense anymore. Nonetheless, though, look forward to some cool things coming up, hopefully on April 15th. Over in Custom Corner, I want to shout out Boogeyman393. The one piece that really, really caught my eye was this awesome Venom repaint that he did based off of the Riot, <laughs> I was like, Lasher, Toxin, Riot body. This, this is just such an incredible looking 90s kind of comic book cell shaded sort of Venom. I love the grinning smile. It just takes me back, man, takes me back to a certain era. But that's not all he's doing. The dude is very prolific, looks like he's got great, amazing painting skills. So you can check out some of the other customs and things he's done on his Instagram. This is one of those ones that genuinely, I think you're gonna wanna follow because I can see more kind of evolution coming from his style. And when he's putting out bangers like that Venom along with a whole bunch of other stuff that he's showing, yeah, that's definitely a customizer worth watching. Over in Cosplay Corner, want to shout out Oichi Official. Wow, yeah, I, I don't know if there's a little bit of computer jiggery pokery going on with some of these images, and if there isn't, then take that as a compliment, because I was looking at some of these going like, man, no, human, human beings don't look like that. But you know what? It'd be a lot cooler if they did. <laughs> no, I'm kidding though, but still, it's pretty awesome cosplay. So while you're checking out that, let me tell you about Into the AM, who are sponsoring this channel. If you'd like to pick yourself up a badass graphic design t-shirt, then you can do by clicking the link in the description below. That'll give you 10% off your order, which is already a steal considering the different bargains and bundle deals that they do. A huge amount of wicked looking t-shirts that you can choose from. Step into the summer looking like the coolest dude on YouTube. Not me, obviously, but there are some other streamers who wear into the AM t-shirts and dang it, they look cool. All right, gang, thank you for taking the time to watch this little promo plug and thank you, Ochi Official, for just making ludicrously good looking cosplay pictures. She's, <laughs> she's doing a good job over there. All right, gang, you know what? I think it's time to wrap this episode up. And folks, that does it for good news for today. Thank you so much for watching. What do you think about the items covered? Comment below. Let me know. And if you like what you see here and you want to see more, then you know what you gotta do. You gotta join the 6-1 Clicks 
by clicking the like, share and subscribe buttons. And if you want to go one step beyond in supporting the channel, then you can do by getting yourself a YouTube channel membership. By doing that, you can watch all the exclusive videos, you can take part in the live stream chats and also sleep well at night, knowing that you help Dave keep the lights on. All right, gang, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who does support, whether it's with a membership or just a good old thumbs up or, or just going out and just being a nice person, completely irregardless of moral behavior. I appreciate you too. And gang, until next time, keep displaying moral behavior.